name is Nick Spooner, and I'll be presenting the paper Proof Carrying Data from Accumulation Schemes. This is joint work with Benedict Buntz, uh, Alessandro Chiesa, and Pratish Mishra. So let's start with some motivation. Um, the problem that we're trying to solve is the following. So you uh, have a t-step non-deterministic communication again, a computation, which is given by a circuit f, which is the transition step function, um, and initial input z0 and a target output zt. Um, and you want to check that uh, there exist intermediate input, uh, intermediate states uh, z1 up to zt minus 1 and witnesses w0 up to wt minus 1, such that for every time step t, uh, f applied to ziwi takes you to the next uh, step z i plus 1. So this represents essentially a, a, a non-deterministic machine computation. Um, and one way to do this, uh, which is fairly well understood, um, is to simply prove the entire computation at once. So this monolithic proof, there are many ways to do this. Um, and the issues with, with uh, these schemes are typically they require a large amount of prover memory. So the, me the prover has to hold the entire transcript of the computation in his head at the same time. Um, and so you need something like s times t memory, where s is the space needed to compute the, the function f, whereas the computation itself only needs uh, s memory. And proving the t plus first step so you prove t steps, and now you want to prove sort of t plus one steps. Uh, this requires recomputing the entire proof from the beginning. Uh, so to avoid these issues, Valiant suggested uh, in 2008 um, a notion called incrementally verifiable computation, um, which looks like this. So you uh, take as input z0 um, and w0 into the prover. The prover produces uh, a proof along with the next state z1. Um, which you then feed again into the prover along with the input w1 uh, and you get a new proof z2 pi 2 and so on um, and you do this over and over again uh, until you end up with uh, the final state zt and the final proof pi t that attests to the correctness of the entire computation um, so this is what what incrementally verifiable computation looks like um, and then there is a generalization of that uh, which is called proof carrying data, uh, which takes this sort of path computation, this sort of normal path computation, and um, generalizes it to uh, any directed acyclic graph. Um, so, for the purposes of, of this talk, I will talk about IVC and PCD interchangeably, uh, so you can think about either. Some applications of IVC on, and PCD uh, include succinct blockchains, um, SNARKs with low space complexity, and uh, verifiable delay functions. Um, so in the, the latter case, you can build a VDF by um, taking f to be some, some hash function, and this will give you a fairly efficient VDF. Um, how do we build IVC on, on PCD? Uh, so the sort of state of the art construction is from uh, this BCCT 2013 paper, uh, where you build uh, IVC PCD out of uh, a snark with succinct, so polylogarithmic verification. Um, so a snark here is a, a succinct non-directive argument of knowledge. It was shown more recently that this can be relaxed somewhat to snarks with sublinear verification, um, and also this uh, holds in the in the quantum setting, in post quantum setting. Unfortunately, the this sublinear verification requirement is pretty strong, and it restricts the sort of class of snarks that we're able to use. Uh, to construct this, this uh, primitive. Um, and so the question that we ask in this work is, is sublinear verification required for IVC and PCD? Um, and a recent work uh, suggests that maybe this is not the case. So they, this is by Bo Grigg and Hopwood from last year. Um, and they outlined a novel approach to obtain IVC from a specific snark which has actually a linear verifier. Um, and they give details about sort of some important practical aspects, uh, things like elliptic curve cycles that you need to uh, implement this scheme, but they don't give a detailed construction or a proof of security. And so that's what we uh, do in this work along with some other things. Um, so 
and essentially uh, we take this um, idea from from BGH19 and we formalize it um, using this new cryptographic notion called an accumulation scheme and then we start to develop the theory of accumulation schemes so we show that uh, a snark with an accumulation scheme uh, implies IVC on, or PCD even if the snark verifier itself is not sublinear. Uh, secondly, we can obtain snarks with accumulation schemes by combining a snark whose verification is sublinear relative to some primitive um, with an accumulation scheme for that primitive. Uh, so we'll see um, examples of that later on um, where this is, uh, this is important. Uh, and then finally, uh, we have a particular choice of primitive that we're interested in. So uh, we show that two popular polynomial commitment schemes have accumulation schemes. Um, so one thing to note about these results is that they don't quite all fit together. So uh, the top two, theorem one and theorem two, hold in the standard model. Um, theorem one does not hold in the random oracle model. Uh, theorem three holds in the random oracle model. Um, but is not known to hold in the standard model, and theorem two uh, is black box, uh, and so it holds in, in both. But to go from bottom to top, um, one needs to make a heuristic assumption, which uh, you'll see in more detail in a second. Um, and we should note that there is no uh, relation between accumulation schemes and set accumulators, they just have similar names. Um, so a summary of our results uh, in a sort of pictorial form, um, so, uh, snarks with accumulation schemes imply IBC uh, PCD. And well, how do you obtain a snark with an accumulation scheme? Well, you start with a snark that is efficient relative to some predicate, and then you add an accumulation scheme for that predicate. Um, and moreover, this uh, allows you actually to turn snarks which are efficient relative to, uh, sorry, snarks with accumulation schemes into snarks which actually have succinct verifiers using this result of BCCT13. Um, unfortunately, uh, while this picture is very nice, we actually don't know how to instantiate these things in the standard model. Um, and so we turn to the random oracle model. Um, so we have snarks uh, which are efficient relative to uh, polynomial commitments uh, in the random oracle model. And uh, we show how to build, so this is previous work, and we show how to build accumulation schemes for some polynomial commitments in the random oracle model again. Uh, we can then apply theorem two in the random oracle model uh, to obtain a snark with the accumulation scheme in the wrong. Uh, and then we have to apply this uh, random oracle heuristic. So it's a commonly applied heuristic um, that uh, we make a, an assumption that there is a choice of concrete hash function which maintains the security of this scheme, um, which means that we end up with a snark with the accumulation scheme in the standard model. Um, and then uh, we apply theorem one. So theorem one is a theorem, but the the um, uh, the, the condition of the theorem only holds heuristically, and so we only heuristically obtain these new PCD and IBC constructions with nice properties. Um, so uh, let's start with a little bit of background about uh, previous IBC PCD constructions and this uh, method of recursive composition that is used to build them. Um, so a quick definition of IBC, uh, the prover takes in the previous state of the computation Z and the previous proof pi, uh, along with potentially a witness, but I will ignore this in the, in the remainder of this talk, um, and outputs uh, a new state Z prime and a new proof pi prime. The verifier takes in the current state and the current proof, uh, whatever they are, and uh, outputs 0 or 1, depending on whether it thinks the entire computation so far has been performed correctly. Um, and notice that the, the prover is sort of able to be uh, looped back into itself. And this is formalized by this completeness uh, condition, which says that if the verifier accepts uh, a state proof pair, then when you apply the prover one step, um, then the verifier also accepts this new sort of Z prime pi prime. Uh, and the soundness property or proof of knowledge property is the, the following uh, that for every uh, adversary that produces uh, a final proof, uh, a final state proof pair, um, which is accepted by the verifier, we can extract from that adversary a complete transcript of the computation so far. So going all the way back to this Z0. Um, 
So this is IBC. Uh, the final property that we need from IBC, which sort of makes it interesting uh, compared to, to just uh, arguments, um, is this efficiency property. So we want that the size of the proof pi prime is the same uh, as the size of the, of the proof pi. So when, as you, when you apply the, a single step of the prover, the, the proof does not grow in size. And this means also that the verification, um, because it, it's uh, on sort of a fixed size object, it does not uh, grow in size either. Um, so this is what we want. How do we build it? Uh, so one of the building blocks that we require is a snark with preprocessing. Um, so what is this? Uh, we have a relation R, which is the relation of, uh, of circuits with uh, inputs that evaluate to one. Um, and our snark will be uh, an argument or a proof system for this, uh, for this relation. So you start with a setup phase, which takes in just the circuit and outputs a proving and verification key corresponding to that circuit. Uh, the prover holds uh, X and W uh, and produces a proof pi that C of XW is equal to one. And the verifier which holds X uh, is able to check that proof and uh, then knows that there exists some W uh, such that C of XW is equal to one. Um, so we have the standard completeness and adaptive proof of knowledge properties. I won't talk about them. Um, one important thing about SNARKs is that the proof size is sublinear. This is sort of what we mean by the succinct in the in SNARKs. Um, so the size of the proof is much smaller than the size of the circuit. Um, and optionally, we also obtain uh, sublinear verification. Um, we can also also ask a sublinear verification. Um, so here we want the time of the verifier is much smaller than the size of the circuit. So note that this is optional and so there are snarks that fulfill it and there are snarks that are interesting that, that don't and we will um, later on be interested about uh, in snarks that actually don't fulfill this condition. Um, but for now we're going to look at snarks that do and uh, see how, they, uh, how you can use them uh, via this technique of recursive composition to build IBC. Uh, so the way that you do it is you start with this uh, IBC prover. Um, so the IBC prover is going to take in uh, ZT pi T and it's going to output ZT plus one pi T plus one. This is just the, the syntax of the prover. And so now we're just going to fill it in based on uh, you know what we need to go from, from T to T plus one. So obviously to go from ZT to ZT plus one, you need to apply the transition function F, that's uh, by definition. Um, then with uh, the proof pi t, what you do is you verify it. Uh, so the prover is gonna, is gonna make sure that the proof is correct. Um, then what he's gonna do is actually encapsulate both of these things into a circuit R, which uh, does the transition and also verifies the previous proof. Um, this, uh, so I, I sort of hit this, but the, the um, Snark verify needs a verification key for a circuit, and in this case, we will choose also the circuit R. Uh, so this is sort of the recursive property of this. Um, and the Snark prover then uh, proves that this circuit R accepts, um, that it sort of out outputs the, this ZT plus one, and pi T plus one is uh, the proof um, for the next. So like pi T plus one, which is the, the output of this, uh, this prover, is the proof for the next step. Uh, the IBC verifier is then just the snark verifier, um, where you key it with this uh, with the, ver the verification key for the circuit R. Um, completeness basically follows directly from the snark completeness, like the statement will just be true. Um, soundness, uh, essentially what you do is you use the proof of knowledge property of the snark to recursively <clears throat> extract from the IBC prover. So you, you can kind of go back in time by repeatedly, repeatedly applying the uh, proof of knowledge property. Uh, this note that uh, this construction and in particular the soundness does not hold in the random oracle model because here we are using the verifier in a non-black box way. We're proving things about the verifier and this just doesn't work when, the, when there is a random oracle. Um, in terms of efficiency, well, this, uh, this is good because the size of this proof pi uh, is the same as the size of a snark proof for this circuit R. Um, and what is the size of that? Well, this maybe takes some, uh, 
some some thinking, and this is actually sort of where the sublinear verification part comes in. So the size of this circuit R depends on the size of the snark verifier. Uh, in particular, it is at least the size of the snark verifier. And so if the snark verifier were, say, linear, then this circuit R would actually increase in size every time because you would be proving something about the circuit R from the last step, and so it would get sort of slightly bigger at every step. With sublinear verification, this allows you to uh, avoid this blow up by just having the verifier for R be smaller than R. Um, and this is why sublinear verification is necessary, it's because you prove stuff about the SNARK verifier. So the question we ask is, what about SNARKs that don't have sublinear verification? What can you do? Um, and uh, to discuss that, well, I'm, I'm going to need to introduce our new sort of cryptographic tool, which is uh, accumulation schemes. Uh, an accumulation scheme is best expressed in the following way. Uh, so think about a uh, list, uh, a stream of inputs uh, Q1 up to Qt um, going on forever. And we have a predicate phi uh, which takes in uh, inputs Qi and outputs and outputs a 0, 1 value. And the quantity that we're interested in is the conjunction of the predicate phi applied to all of the qi. Right? i is 1 up to t of phi of qi. We want to know whether this is 1. And so one way we can do this is just by, uh, you know, every time a q comes in, we, uh, we apply phi to it, and then we just remember the conjunction. So this is sort of, you know, we just remember this one bit. Um, but if phi is expensive, this might take a long time. And so uh, an accumulation scheme allows you to to enlist a, an untrusted prover to help you with this. Um, so the cryptographic object uh, is an accumulator, and what an accumulator does is uh, it accumulates the, the truth value of this, this statement. So the, well, we have an accumulation prover, uh, P, which takes in the old accumulator and the current uh, query, and it outputs the next accumulator. So we do this over and over again. Um, then uh, we also have a, a verification algorithm which checks the prover's work at each step. So it takes in the old accumulator and the next accumulator and the current query, and it outputs one if the um, if the prover did its job correctly. Um, and we do this for, once again for every step. Um, and then finally, we have an algorithm called the decider, which uh, which runs just once uh, at time t. And it takes in the teeth accumulator, and it checks essentially whether this accumulator is is right in some sense. Um, and this has the property that if all of these checks pass, so if the verifier, if every verifier accepted and the decider accepted, then um, this implies that the uh, this conjunction is one. Um, so note that we save in this case if the cost of v is much smaller than the cost of the predicate phi. Um, so, uh, because then the sort of, the, even if the decider is quite expensive, the cost is sort of amortized over all of, the, all of this time t. Um, the other thing that we would like, uh, that's sort of necessary, is that the size of the accumulator does not grow with the time t. Uh, and this will also mean that the decider does not uh, Grow with the like the time of the decider does not grow with the time t, and this avoids sort of certain trivial constructions. Uh, so what can we do with this? Well, we can actually build uh, IVC and PCD from snarks with accumulation schemes. So uh, if you have a snark um, and you add to that an accumulation scheme for the predicate corresponding to the snark verifier, then you get uh, an IVC or PCD scheme. Uh, importantly, the verifier for the snark does not need to be sublinear. However, the verifier for the accumulation scheme does need to be sublinear, but this is okay because this is likely to be a, a simpler object. So one thing to note is that if V is in fact sublinear, then you can sort of trivially do this by, uh, by setting the uh, accumulation verifier to be equal to the snark verifier, uh, and then decide it then does nothing. Um, but as I said, there are more interesting constructions than that. Um, moreover, this construction 
preserves both zero knowledge and post quantum security. Uh, finally, uh, this construction shares this drawback of uh, the previous constructions of IBC and PCD, uh, which is that it makes non black box use of the accumulation scheme verify, which means that it doesn't hold in the random oracle model. Um, so let's briefly go over the construction. Again, we're going to sort of do the same thing as before and look at just the inputs and the outputs um, and try and sort of go from one to the other. Uh, so the IVC proof now is going to consist of two parts. It consists of a snark proof pi i and an accumulator a i. Um, and the first thing that we do, obviously, is we compute the transition function. Uh, then what we want to do is accumulate the uh, previous inputs to, to P into a new accumulator um, AI plus one. So we do that using the accumulation prover. Uh, then the next thing that we have to do is to check that this was done correctly. Um, otherwise we, you know, we, we need at some point to, to, to do this verification. Otherwise uh, we don't keep track of whether the accumulator has been correctly updated. Um, and so this we, this we do. Um, and then, like before, we, we encapsulate now the, the uh, transition function and the verifier for the accumulation scheme in uh, the circuit R. And then, uh, so this is the description of the circuit R, and we, we then uh, apply the snark prover to, uh, to the circuit R. Um, then uh, the IVC verifier, so it takes in, takes in again this uh, Z and then the IVC proof pi and A. Uh, the first thing that it does is it runs the decider to check that the uh, accumulator was, was sort of correctly formed. Um, and then it runs the actual smart verifier on this, uh, on this final proof. Um, so the reason that we don't need the snark verifier to be sublinear here is that the recursive circuit doesn't contain it. We only actually ever run it once right at the end. Uh, so the recursive circuit only contains the accumulation verifier, which means that we only need the accumulation verifier to be sublinear. Uh, so that's the theorem. And then the question, of course, is how do we obtain snarks with accumulation schemes? Where do they come from? Um, so very quickly, uh, the the way that you get them is you start with a uh, well, what, an easy way to get them is that you start with a snark where the verifier is succinct except for some sort of expensive predicate phi. Um, and then you say, okay, phi has an accumulation scheme, so I designed an accumulation scheme for phi. And this implies that the snark overall has an accumulation scheme, uh, essentially because I removed the, the expensive part of the snark verifier. Um, and then the question becomes naturally what predicates are actually useful to build accumulation schemes for. And the answer for this comes from a very popular methodology for building snarks. Um, so you start with, the, with this information theoretic proof system, which is a, called the polynomial IOP or AHP. Uh, you add to that a polynomial commitment scheme and combine them together using a compiler. And this gives you a snark. So, uh, you know, examples of this are Sonic, Plonk, and Marlin, uh, and the polynomial commitment scheme. Uh, for example, you have these KZG, BBB, or Halo. Uh, and this is, a, this is used to construct uh, many popular, sort of widely used snarks. Um, and so how do you then accumulate such a snark? Um, well, note we notice that uh, whenever you build a snark with this, uh, with this framework, what you end up with actually is a snark that is predicate efficient uh, with respect to the uh, verification predicate of the polynomial commitment scheme. Um, and then uh, this means that what you need to do is just design an accumulation scheme for the verification predicate of the, of the PC scheme. Um, and you combine these things together using our theorem 2 and you obtain an accumulation scheme for the snark as a whole. Uh, and this is what we do. So we design accumulation schemes for two widely used polynomial commitments with different properties. Um, and these yield, in a heuristic sense, uh, two interesting new PCD constructions. The first one, uh, you start with a predicate efficient snark with, uh, with respect to, to PC, whatever that might be, your favorite snark. Um, and then you add uh, an accumulation scheme for this KZG commitment. 
um, apply uh, this, this chain of theorems and heuristics. Um, and what you get is uh, PCD and IVC from bilinear groups uh, where the, you have a trusted setup. Um, but in return, you get uh, very small proofs. And moreover, in, compared to uh, previous approaches, uh, an advantage that you have with this approach is that you don't do any pairings in the recursive circuit, which means that in principle, you, you can, uh, this will be a lot more efficient. Um, the alternative construction, the other construction that we have, um, again, you start with some predicate efficient snark with respect to, to polynomial commitments, and uh, you add in an accumulation scheme for a different polynomial commitment scheme, which is this uh, discrete log-based scheme based on the bulletproofs in a product argument. Um, apply this, this, uh, these theorems, uh, and what you get is uh, PCD and IVC now from standard groups, so not necessarily with, uh, with the pairing, um, which has a transparent setup. So there's no sort of secret parameter that is generated. Um, and secondly, the, the proofs are pretty small, so not as small as uh, the KCG proofs, but much smaller than previous uh, PCD and IVC schemes with transparent setup. And that is all. Thank you.